Marks, nice to see you. It is uh, June, middle of June. Cannot believe it. Hopefully everyone's having a good summer. But the market has been pretty good. We usually see kind of sideways markets in the summer, but we actually have some good trading environments here. So let's talk about last week so we can get ready for the week ahead. We continued to see equities move higher. We've been bullish on equities for the last two to three months, and they just keep going. They just keep going, and the NASDAQ just keeps going as well. We did get a little bit of pullback in the dollar, and we do see yields go a little bit higher, but they're really tame. So compared to what's going on in the equity markets, the equity markets are having this nice bull market run. We're really not seeing the dollar or yields do anything, which is very conducive to the equity markets going higher. The equity markets like it when those dollar and yields just stay about where they were. We did get some negative news this week on cryptos that caused them to pull back. The SEC has opened up a lawsuit against Coinbase and against Binance, basically saying that they should be registered broker dealers, putting some pressure on crypto for sure. As far as the economic reports go last week, we got a couple that I wanted to talk about. First off, let's talk about this RBA. The RBA raised rates unexpectedly, really caught the markets by surprise, and the Aussie had a really nice jump this week. So they moved up by 25 basis points, up to 4.1. That was a surprise to the market, especially when you see that the GDP came out a little bit weaker than expected. So the RBA probably already had that number, and they decided to raise rates anyway. We also got a surprise raise by the Bank of Canada, up to 4.75. However, the Canadian dollar did not go up much after this. Actually, it had a little bit of a pop, and then it spent the next three days giving everything back. So we had the Aussie that surprised. It ran and ran all week. With the Canadian dollar, the surprise, it had a pop, and then it just had no follow-through whatsoever. Let's take a look at the last one. Friday, we had the employment report out of Canada, and you can see it was much worse than expected. So this is not what you want to see. You want to see the central bank raising rates and strong economic growth for a currency to go higher. So a little bit confusing here. We got rate hike by the Bank of Canada and then really lousy economic news after that, causing the CAD to really not have that that uh, strength and that oomph. So let's take a look at the numbers of last week. So we had the S&P up about a half a percent, world markets up about a half a percent. You see crypto got hit down 3.6% in the crypto basket. Gold had a nice little bounce after being weak for the last about month. And then oil, oil, this is a crazy story because we had some big news at the first of the week. We had a surprise cut in production from OPEC plus and the oil market jumped up about 4 or 5%. By the end of the week, it had given it all back and actually went down. So the oil markets remain weak, which could be another reason for the weakness in the Canadian dollar. So let's take a look at these charts here. Here is the chart of the S&P, and you can see here, we got a nice little breakout of a high base. Now look, that's not a great candle on Friday. We would have loved to have seen a uh, green candle that closed closer to the high than the low. But look, there's no doubt that this was a breakout of a high base. Just This is just bullish price action. Everything is pointing to higher prices. So until that changes in technicals, we will have to stay bullish in equities. The numbers in currencies. We talked about the Aussie being the star here, 1.45%. Take a look at this CAD. This CAD was very disappointing. I went into this week with CAD as my number one trade. It actually worked out well the first part of the week, and then it did not work out well. So I had one winner in CAD early in the week, and then I had a loser in CAD later in the week as it weakened. The Aussie was the best performer of the week. The currencies we liked the best on the short side were the yen and the Swiss franc. And you can see those both went down. Those both were decent trades, but take a look at the euro. The euro weakened even more than the Swiss franc did, and the dollar was actually the weakest currency on the week. We take a look at cryptos. Down across the board, Bitcoin and Ethereum held in a little bit better than all the other currencies. 
So let's take a look at where the market is right here, right now. We are at a plus three. Everything is pointing to bullishness in equities. So the question is, are we going to get that risk on move? Now we saw that last week. We saw currencies like the Aussie and Kiwi go up. We saw currencies of safety, the Swiss franc, the yen, the dollar go down. It's just not a, a super strong move, but the undercurrent is there. The absolutely undercurrent is there. If we take a look at world equities, world equities are also breaking out to new highs. Come over here to the crypto basket and you can see it's just not going anywhere. It's totally sideways. So we've been uninterested in cryptos here for about the last couple months. And I don't see anything on the horizon to make this even interesting. Now let's take a look at the calendar because boy, this calendar is packed this week. Absolutely packed. First off on Tuesday. So we don't have anything Sunday, Monday. So the fireworks start on Tuesday. US CPI, that's going to be a big one. That's going to be one day before the Fed meeting. So Wednesday, we have a Fed meeting. That's going to be a big deal. We are meeting live during this Fed meeting. So come join us for that. That's going to be really going to set the precedence for the whole week. Now, Ankit, I know you and I were talking earlier, and I really liked what you said about this week being a tale of two moves. Will you let everyone know your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is, has a lot to do with inflation numbers and uh, the expected uh, move from the FOMC. And, uh, you know, we talk about how the uh, CPI numbers, you know, we had some big heavy numbers last year. Around that time, so that's going to fall off, which means that this inflation number is likely to drop. But that could not be it because the right next day we have the FOMC and one of the recent trends that we have seen across other major central banks are that they are surprisingly rising rates. I mean, look at this week, RBA and Bank of Canada, both were not expected to raise rates and they did. Because I think it's a pretty common situation across the world is that the inflation is sticky and the U.S. is not far from that situation. And we have seen uh, in the last you know few weeks, we have seen some of the numbers that are still pointing out to, you know, the inflation number still being higher than what they really wanted to be, the core CPI. So I think uh, we could see an early pump on a Tuesday and then we probably see a bigger move on Wednesday, especially if we have the FOMC following the same suit. So I think FOMC looking at the ECB, we got to be prepared as uh, as we are seeing this rate hike uh, sort of coming back on the, on the schedule. And I think these are likely to cause big moves. It caused big move for Canadian dollar and Australian dollar. I think next week I'm really looking for the dollar and the euro as well. So, I mean, euro is expected to raise rates at about 25 basis points, but the U.S. is not. So if there's any surprise there, I think that could carry a, a lot bigger punch to some of the currency movements here. And I think you're exactly right. I mean, look at this calendar. This is like the first week of the month. Usually the first week of the month has all the news. This thing is just jam packed. And everywhere you look, there's a news event that's going to move something around. I mean, look at look at Wednesday night, Kiwi GDP. That's going to be a mover. We have Aussie employment report. And then we have some numbers out of China. So Wednesday night's going to be great. Wednesday is going to be great. Tuesday morning is going to be great with the CPI. And then it's not over. You've got the Euro, as Ankit mentioned. They, we got the ECB statement, the ECB press conference. And then look at this. On Thursday night, we have Bank of Japan, which has been one of the biggest moves that we've seen over the last couple of months. This week is really setting up to be a great week. And I think you have to go into this week as just, okay, you're a trader. You are going to make trades based on the movements. You have no alliance, you have no allegiance. You're just going to look at the price action and make your trades based on that. I think this is a week that you do not want to go into the week with a predetermined course of action where you say, hey, I think this is going to be an up week. So I'm looking to play Aussie long. I'm looking to play this. Look, that trade's probably going to work earlier in the week, but later in the week, I'm telling you, this week is going to be all over the place. And I think you just want to be very cool, calm and collected and just follow where the moves are. Look, if dollar goes up, let's buy it. If it goes down, let's sell it. Let's just be like that on every single trade. Let's get into the currencies one by one, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time this week like unlike we usually do because this is where we kind of get locked into, 
oh, this is what we're going to do. I think this week you really want to be fluid and really look at every currency as both a long and a short. Anka, what do you think about that methodology going into this week where you really just have no predetermined notion and you're just saying, hey, I'm going to be long and short, whatever's moving? Absolutely. You know, this is one of the things that I always like to do around these kind of weeks where I just try to go without any opinion. Because what happens is that if you have an opinion, you get locked into it. If you are looking at some, you know, good trending scores or velocity scores, you're more than likely to look for a continuation. Uh, but I think this is where we can see a two part week. I mean, look at last week, CAD was the strongest currency. Here we are, CAD is not the strongest currency. So the momentum can shift very quickly. And I think that's what really these events will cause is a huge uh, sort of shift from one way or the other. Aussie's the strongest currency this week. It might not be the one next week. So I think that's really what we have to take away from this is when we have less events on schedule, there's a better chance for continuation. But when we have a lot of these news events, we can change from a day to day. And that's how I like to approach it. Focus on what's likely to move on which day, and we'll focus on that. For example, Euro is a bigger currency to trade on Thursday. So let's put that on shelf and let's focus on, you know, dollar or the Aussie or any other currency that's likely to be having a news event early in the week. So I love that. I think that's uh, something I'll recommend, you know, going to a big event like this or big week like this is to just go uh, without any bias. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are looking at the cryptos and this is not where the move is right now. So I'm going to go through these cryptos super quick because it's basically telling us, hey, this is the wrong place to look. Bitcoin going nowhere, Bitcoin Cash dropping a little bit, Ethereum just simply going nowhere, Litecoin going nowhere. So I just blew through those very quickly because this is not where the action is right now. As a directional trader, you need to be like a moth to flame. Wherever there's action, that's where we want to be. And right now, it's just not in cryptos. It's going to be in the Forex market this week. So here we have dollar. Dollar, we had this run up to these levels, and we've now pulled back. So we are at a key support level here on dollar. We got a little bit of a doji candle here. So we're to zero on the overall trend. Technically speaking, this would be a good place for the dollar to have a bounce. Again, we follow technicals, we're technical traders. So at this point, I'm looking at dollars saying, okay, unless this breaks the support, I have to at least think that it's likely to have a little bounce here. That being said, we're not seeing anything at the moment. I mean, look at the velocity score. So we are getting down to support levels. The velocity score is not showing that we are having a bounce. I think you just have to sit there and watch dollar and react to it right here, right now. I think it's a 50-50 trade at best. Looking at the yen though, however, we have a very clear trend here. Very clear trend. We are breaking November 2022 lows. We've got velocity to the downside. Yen was my favorite short last week. It is my favorite short again this week. We do have Bank of Japan on Thursday night, but I see no reason why, uh, why the Japanese yen is going to have any big bounce until then. I think it's just going to be a drift lower for the yen. The Swiss franc was my second favorite short last week. You can see it basically went down a little bit last week. We are holding on these levels. So we have a really good level of support here. I need to wait for this Swiss franc to drop. It's just not quite there yet, but it absolutely could be. So the Swiss franc for me later in the week, if we start to see a breakdown, I'm all over this one on the short side. As you can see here, Euro is already headed lower. We are already starting to break through some support lines, putting in some pressure. We've got some velocity to the downside. So Euro to me looks like a good short as well, along with the yen. Going over here to pound. Pound that was really lousy at the first part of this year has turned into a really nice trending currency here. Look, there's no reason why you don't want to be long pound here. Pound is looking very good technically. Right now we're high basing. Once we break out of this high base, we could be ready for another run. So I think it's just a matter of time to where we just need to look for a nice entry on pound on the long side. 
All right, let's talk about CAD because this was the disappointment for me. As I said, I was long once CAD earlier in the week and it was nice and then I got long again and it absolutely fell apart. Now look, this is just a big red candle. In the scope of the entire trend, this is still trending nicely. However, it is pulling back. So during its pullback, I don't want to be buying it. I want to wait for this pullback to be over. Once we start to go back up again, I will look at CAD long. But as far as right here, right now, it is not in a good place uh, for a buy. The Aussie dollar, however, is looking nicely. We had this long high base here over a couple days and we broke out. I think this thing's got a lot of momentum. This is where you want to be right here, right now. This is where the money's going. It's going to end at some point. We understand that. We know it. But for right now, we know what direction the Aussie is going. It's definitely the best looking long out here. And here we have the Kiwi, which has been really dreadful, really terrible. But it's going to get pulled along with the Aussie somewhat. I think the Kiwi is a decent long here. It's just, it's just a very short-term long. Ultimately, the trend is terrible on Kiwi. And I think we're going to have one or two good days. But ultimately, I don't think you want to be sitting on Kiwi waiting and watching for a buy point. I think you want to be doing that with the pound, the Aussie, and the CAD when it's done pulling back. So to me, okay, Kiwi could be a good trade on a certain day, but that's about it. Ankit, what are your favorite currencies for the week? Hey, Rob. Well, going to this week, I think my my, my primary focus is uh, the dollar, which like you, you showed it, like it's right at the support level. Uh, but I think the European currencies look interesting here. I mean, going to next week, I mean, the ECB is expected to raise rates, but I mean, the euro is underperforming. That's not a good sign. And we had the uh, Swiss uh, chairman yesterday um, talked about uh, his, his comments came out and he was definitely sounded hawkish. And I think that's why we saw a nice rally, especially in the Swiss franc, if you uh, look at the chart, that was a nice rally based on that news. And then we just totally reversed it. So this is, again, telling me that there's an underlying weakness. So I think those places are great uh, to be hunting for. Um, but outside of that, I think there's certain currencies that are just not interesting. I mean, Kiwi has been dead for days till just, you know, like yesterday and today is actually a little better here. So it's very important right now just to look at velocity and which currency is moving. Um, and clearly this week, most of the currencies have moved off the news event. So I think that's where next week we probably see more movement in a lot of currencies because, um, you know, we have the Kiwi GDP. We have um, the, uh, you know, the pound GDP. There's a, there's a little bit of news on every currency next week. So I think this is where I'm expecting more movements. Um, so, you know, I don't really have a favorites here because I think next week all of, all of them are my favorites. We'll see where the movements happen. Um, but I, I do like um, these potential for movements next week. Well, thank you, Ankit. And we're going to look at some potential trades here. But I want to be very clear because, you know, every week we do this session, we go through potential trades. And sometimes we say, hey, this is going to be a nice trade for the entire week. Or this trade probably is going to get a nice setup on Wednesday. This week, I really just want to talk about Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Because I'm telling you, Wednesday on, it's going to be wild. There's going to be things moving all over the place. It's going to be wild. So that is the time where I want everyone just to be, hey, I'm a trader. I'm going to go long the strong, short the weak. That's what I'm going to do. And I have no allegiance or no preconceived notions about anything. So everything I want to talk about here over the next little bit about trade setups is really Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I think you just wipe the blank slate and then react off of that. So for me, my favorite currency early on this week is the Aussie, is the Aussie. My second favorite currency is the pound. And my third favorite currency is the Kiwi. And again, that Kiwi, just like we saw this week, was a terrible trade until Friday. And then it was a great trade. I think that's exactly what Kiwi is going to do. It's going to be a little harder to catch, but when you do see it moving, I think that's the one you do want to jump on if you don't have better moves in the pound and the Aussie. On the short side, yen. Yen to me is the easy trade. And euro, 
Euro's looking really terrible too. So I really want to focus on these currency crosses. And then, of course, on Wednesday, well, Tuesday morning with the CPI, the dollar is going to start moving a lot. Wednesday is going to move even more. And I definitely want to be trading dollar during those periods. So let's take a look at those couple crosses here. And as I said earlier, just really talking about the first couple days of the week. And then we'll be meeting and sending out videos all week to update you on, on what we think is likely to happen. So let's start off with my favorite cross early in the week, Aussie Yen. All right, so I'm going to go out to a daily chart. You can see on a daily chart, we've got a nice breakout of some ranges here. I mean, we're just breaking out of some resistance that we hit back here, back in February. You know, look, the next, the next resistance area is all the way up here. So there's a lot of runway here for Aussie Yen. This is on a daily chart. If we go to a four-hour chart, look at this. We're just seeing some nice price movement. So we had a nice base here. We had a nice run. We're just going to wait for either a base or a pullback to jump in. At this point, Again, this is on Friday, so we'll see where this thing closes. But I want to see maybe a little bit more basing on Sunday night and then a breakout maybe in the European session or in the U.S. session. I think this is the trade where you want to be. And I do think equally as good is going to be Euro-Aussie. I think this Euro-Aussie cross also looks really good here. So if we take a look at on a daily chart, we can see same thing here. We are breaking through some pretty major support and resistance lines. Next level for this is going to be down here at uh, 158.40 ish. So we've gotten another 100 pips until we reach our next level of support. I don't see any reason why, again, this is a good entry. Not right here. We just had three big candles. Same thing. I would like to see just a little bit of relief, a base, a bounce up. And I think it's just asking to be taking short here. I also want to take a look at pound yen. So if I take a look at the markets on late Sunday night or Monday morning and the Aussies not doing all that much, I'm going to jump over here to pound. Pound yen, again, look at this, showing lots of momentum to the upside. Here's a daily chart. As you can see we are above, again, levels we have not seen in years. So got a lot of momentum. Yes, I know it's going to end sometime, but we know which direction the train is going right here, right now. It's just a matter of when do you get on? And the only real question is when you get on is if you get on at the wrong point, you're going to get stopped out on a pullback or something. We want to just make sure we have good timing so that our stop doesn't get violated. But the direction of this thing is very, very clear here. So I like, I like pound yen. I think it's just a matter of Picking that entry point, not getting your stop triggered on any sort of little pullback to where you can ride this thing for the week. Anka, what do you want to take a look at? Hey, Rob. Well, uh, the first one I would like to take a look at is dollar cat. And I like this just because of where it is that right now and risk to the war ratio on it. So let's go on a, a daily chart. You can see that there's a very nice support at that 130 level. So every time in the past, I mean, going back to November, we have bounced off and off again off of this level. So the question is that, you know, can we found another bounce here? Well, next week, we don't have any Canadian dollar news, but we do have the US dollar that's hitting the support level. So I do like how I don't have a risk on one and I can just play the dollar if the CAD remains on the downside. As far as the risk to reward goes, you know, 130 area, 133 area, right below it is a support where it's rejected multiple times. And if it do cash a rally, you know, we have, uh, every time we rally, we rally up to about two to 300 pips. So I do like that risk to the world ratio on this trade. Um, again, no, no sign whatsoever yet, but this is something that is on my watch list that I'll be potentially looking into next week. So this is the one that I, I do like. I mean, Kiwi CAD, this is another one that I was kind of paying attention to. Um, it, you know, it seems like it did capitulate it towards the bottom here. I mean, look at that downward move. Look at the channel there, and here we are, right up into that channel. So the question is, if the Kiwi stays strong, you know, Kiwi has been dead for, for, for some days, and Aussie has really taken the rain. So if we see a switch happen between the Aussie and the Kiwi, I I think the Kiwi could uh, sort of rally a little bit here just, just to play as a catch-up. 
And I think in that case, it's just bouncing off the support. And, um, you know, maybe next couple of days, we can, uh, we can see a push to the upside. Um, but again, those are the two that looks good to me on a technical basis. But, you know, like, like Rob said, I'm very much going into next week without uh, much of a, you know, a, a list of what I really like here. But rather than just look at velocity, see what's moving, and just go with it. I don't have to agree with it. I just have to follow where the movement is. And, uh, and again, I think that's where the potential, that's where the bigger reward risk ratio is uh, around those traits here. So that's my uh, outlook, Rob. Thanks, Ankit. And one last thing, I want to just kind of get this out there in advance. Um, on Wednesday, during the or during and after the FOMC meeting, I'm really watching a few pairs. Uh, dollar yen. I think dollar yen is likely to be the best trade off of that, especially if it's a strong dollar. If it's a strong dollar trade, if if somehow the Fed surprises us and the dollar goes up, dollar yen to me is ready to break out. Uh, this 140.50 area, we've been basing now for about two to three weeks. This thing is building up some energy to do something. I do like this trade quite a bit. And I think the other one also is uh, Euro dollar. We're kind of seeing the same thing here. We had this big move and then we've just been basing here for the last two weeks. Break down below 106. I think that is going to be a trigger. Now look, if it's weak dollar, then I think you want to be uh, long Euro dollar here. Actually, I think you'd rather be long Aussie dollar. So I'm not going to get into that until uh, we talk on Wednesday. But dollar yen is going to be really my number one trade off of that FOMC meeting. To wrap this up, we've got a busy week. We think this is going to be a great trading week. The first couple of days of the week, I think you can play trends. I think you can take a look at, you know, continuation patterns. After that, I think you just have to be a trader. Say, look, I'm a mercenary. I will go long and short anything. I just want to be on the right side of the moves. No preconceived notions and just react to it. Big news on Wednesday, big news on Thursday morning, and big news on Thursday night. Three central banks this week are really going to push things around. Everyone have a great trading week. We will definitely be in communication with everyone this week, sharing with you guys some of our thoughts. And let's go make some pips this week. Goodbye, everybody.